I qualified in 1998 from Leeds and I went on to do basic surgical training. Uh, once I got my membership I then started specialist training in orthopaedics. I left in 2003 and I was at the point of applying for SPR positions. In terms of reasons for leaving, I'm not really sure there was, there was one particular thing. It was just a combination of dissatisfactions, I think, that built up over time. Working conditions, not really feeling all that valued, unhappy colleagues. I'd let a lot of outside interests slip that I really wanted to take on again and I couldn't see a way of doing that. So, yeah, it was a combination of things, really. I think the first time I really started believing that leaving was possible was after I'd sought independent careers advice. Once I'd gone through that process and I realised that the values that I held weren't really matched by the work that I was doing, that's when I thought it's time for a change. I played my cards very close to my chest. I don't really think I told all that many people. Um, I definitely didn't tell my work colleagues. Uh, I didn't really tell most of my family until I had a plan as to what I was going to do. Uh, so it was mostly the careers advisor and, uh, and close non-medical friends. I had superb support from the careers advice service that I went to. Uh, I was able to get emails from them and make sure that I carried on charting the right course. And also my sister, uh, who herself was a, a doctor, so understood what I was going through. Well, having a portfolio career, I can honestly say that no two days are the same and it depends very much on which particular hat I'm wearing. So if I'm on a health informatics day, I might be working from home and remoting into the system from there. Or I could be visiting a hospital and meeting with a consultant to discuss their information needs. Or maybe having a meeting uh, with a team that I'm doing a research project with. If it's a cycling day, then I might be researching an article that I'm writing, um, or I might be out on my bike uh, with another cyclist as a model, uh, riding around from the day taking great photos. And if it's a day down the shop with my wife, then we'll set off together. Uh, we'll get there an hour before the shop opens, uh, and I'll probably start the day by putting the kettle on, getting the coffee on, and getting stuck into a big box of wool, putting it on the system, and then serving customers during the day. I think the most rewarding aspect of my work is, is being my own boss and being able to decide what I do and when and the proportions of the different bits of work that I do. That's great. Uh, working for myself also means I can work remotely, so if I get fed up with one environment I can just take the laptop and go and work somewhere else. Everyone who is self-employed will tell you it's not always a bed of roses. Um, I think sometimes uh, working from home can be a double-edged sword because there are so many distractions there, uh, but like I said, it's easy enough to up sticks and go and work somewhere else or go out on the bike and spend time working on a, on, a, on a different facet of my work. No, I don't have any regrets about leaving medicine. And I don't have any regrets about having done medicine in the first place either, even though I spent, what, 13 years as a signed up member of the profession. Because I think who I am today comes about as a result of all of the things that I experienced as a medic. So no, I wouldn't change a single thing. I think the only thing that I missed, which surprised me a little bit, was, uh, was clinic, was sitting down and talking to patients, uh, finding their level and explaining medical concepts to them. Uh, but I found another outlet for that because I became a medical advisor for a cycling magazine and instead of explaining medical concepts to two people sat in a clinic, all of a sudden I was explaining medical concepts to a much wider audience. So I just found a different way of satisfying that need. There's not really an established route into health informatics, even these days, I don't think. I'd struggle to tell somebody how to get into it. They certainly couldn't follow the path that I took. And as for the other things, no, it's very much about knowing what I wanted, knowing why I wanted it, and just working towards it, really. There are two pieces of advice I think I would give medics who want to change their careers. The first is to stop thinking like a medic. And if you want career change, I think you really have to start thinking differently, reading things you wouldn't normally read, talking to people you wouldn't normally talk to, because you're not going to get a change in your life if you carry on doing exactly the same things that you are. So that's the first thing. The second piece of advice I think I'd give is that it doesn't have to be perfect. The next thing that you move into doesn't have to be the be all and end all. It can be messy, you can make mistakes, you can change your mind, it's fine. Just make a change. I've read dozens and dozens of excellent books on career change, but I think the two that got me started are two very classic texts. Uh, one of them is called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. 
which is an excellent book uh, about personal change. And the other one is called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Those are two very general texts about personal change which are absolutely packed full of common sense and I can really recommend reading both of them. In terms of careers, a very interesting book I read uh, was called What Should I Do With My Life by a chap called Poe Bronson. And it's not instructional in any way, it's just around 75 short stories of people who've made changes in their career. And it's hugely inspiring to see the sorts of different careers that people have gone from and into. So that's another one that I can really recommend.